Hi, it's Rose from the Painted Toad. And I'm here because we're going to be painting this really cool Home Tweet Home Charger. Hopefully that's showing up right. I'm trying something new tonight. I'm using something called StreamYard. So it gives me a chance to flip cameras a little bit easier. Um, and of course, I know I'm a little shadowy here. The uh, art studio is coming with better lighting. So please your patience, um, but you'll have, an, uh, I do have a good light on for painting this. So this is what we are making tonight. And um, we're gonna get started shortly, but I just wanna tell you a little bit about The Painted Toad. Um, the Painted Toad's an online art studio that I started. And um, basically it's about giving people confidence um, in their creativity, um, teaching people how to be artistic and getting people connected to each other um, so that you have that support group of other like-minded people, other creatives, other artists. Um, and it's for people who are interested in learning how to become better at art or just people who need to make time for their art, which is something that I struggle with a lot. Um, so I just wanted to let you know. And then if you're joining us tonight, because I'm using StreamYard, you do have to give StreamYard permission in order for me to see your comments. So if you're adding comments, um, on the Facebook feed. Make sure you give StreamYard permission so that I can see them. And from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my cameras over here so that you'll be able to see my work area. And if you're watching me tonight, go ahead and say hi. Um, tell me where you're from. Maybe I've got some friends and family on here. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to switch my camera over so you can see um, what we're actually making. And I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Of course, if you don't have um, the supplies tonight, you can always make this uh, project at another time. So if you put tweet in the comments, I will send you a link to the supply list. And then what I'll be doing is I'll also be linking this video so you can go back and watch the whole video tutorial again and make it um, at any time that you want. OK, so let me switch over here. I'm just checking. Let's get our camera. OK. So now you should be seeing uh, my workspace here. And let me just make sure this is nice and in focus. OK, there we go. So a little bit better lighting on our artwork here. Um, and so you can see this is what we're making. Um, it's home, tweet home. And um, I am going to, I have a whole brand new charger here <clears throat> that we're going to use. Now, you don't have to use a um, pink charger if pink's not your color. If you're thinking that maybe you'd like to keep this up um, after Valentine's Day, you can always do um, a different color charger. They're very inexpensive. You can find them at craft stores. I found this one at Michael's, and it was like less than $2. Um, so I've also seen them at Hobby Lobby, and there's lots of different choices. So I'm going to set this aside here, and we're going to get started. And if you're joining me, um, this is Rose from The Painted Toad. And uh, go ahead and let me know where you're from. And uh, you can put on there. Um, don't forget, you need to get access from StreamYard. So what I'm starting with here is a paint pen. And this is always a really great tool for doing lines. So some of you that are looking at this and saying, I can't write that kind of lettering and things like that. Um, that's what this is really great for. So I did not actually paint um, the lettering on this. I did paint a lot of the other things. So the first thing I want to do is we need to kind of center this. We need to figure out where the center of our plate is. And basically, I'm just going to kind of pick two areas here going across. And oh, let me need a paint palette. One second. Okay. All right. I just use a paper plate most of the time. Um, and so sometimes with your, um, with these, they're, they're changeable. So you can have, um, this is, has a chisel tip and then also is reversible and has a round tip on the other hand. But I'm just going to use a chisel tip right now. And um, you have to give a little pump here to get the paint flowing. Always good to do this either on a separate piece of paper or there we go. Okay. It's going, you can't really see it. Sorry on the white, but um, it is working. You'll have to just trust me. <laughs> okay, so first things first, I'm going to kind of draw in where 
my hearts are going to go. Okay, so I've got one there. And this this whole step here, this is what I call masking. Um, it's, it's kind of picking and choosing where everything's going to go and using white, um, partly because when we start to paint this, if you do a little bit of masking, sometimes with our paints, like with the red paint here on the birds, if I were to go straight up on this pink background here, sometimes the red just doesn't show up um, very well. It depends on how thick or thin your paints are, especially if you're using craft paints. They have a tendency to, to be a bit thinner. So I have my two hearts here, and these are my centering hearts. And I, when I actually painted this, I did something different. And learning my lesson, I'm giving you the better way to do it. So um, up here, we're gonna we're already going to write in our first word here. We're already going to do home. Um, so home has four letters. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm using the chisel tip, and you could use the round tip. I'm just doing a real simple lines here. So I'm doing these lines like this. And then if you want, you can kind of, you know, bump it out to the side. Another really easy um, font that you can do is just straight lines where you do um, different uh, little dots at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to curve my E here so that we can stay on the plate. And notice I started with M and E. Um, so then I'm going to work my way backwards and I'm going to get the O over here. And hopefully, let me check. Yes, you can see that. I always have to check and make sure you can actually see what I'm doing and my hand is not in the way. Still learning the art of that. It's a whole other thing. And I'm going to add in home here. Okay, so so far so good. Now the next part is because it's home tweet home, I need to do that word again here at the bottom. So I'm going to come down here. This is, I don't know, I feel like the bottom's a little bit easier to do. Maybe we should have started with that, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to, once again, I'm going to do my M and my E first. Now, if you are a perfectionist and you're like, they have to look exactly the same, um, there is another option. If you have a Cricut machine or you know somebody with a Cricut machine, you can do all sorts of really cool um, fonts and letterings and make vinyl stick on letters. So I do have a Cricut machine, um, but for this project, because I wanted people to be able to make it along with me and I can't necessarily send you the lettering um, for a free Facebook Live. So um, that's why we're doing the paint pen here. And you can see here, I gotta, I gotta pump my pen a little bit, get this flowing a little better. All right. So for right now, I'm just gonna kind of leave it like that. I have my spacing. And um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna map out where the birds go. And once again, I'm using the white pen to do that. So our little baby bird is kind of down here and the birds are just very simple shapes. Um, let's see, we've got our bird nest. In fact, I think what I will do is I'm gonna kinda figure out where I want my bird nest here. These are just gonna be little, little swirls. And then in the nest, we have baby bird and baby bird. It's kind of some curves there. And then a little, little face like this. So we have to, this is going to be baby bird's head. Um, we have to make sure that there's enough room on the top for mama and daddy bird to give each other a kiss. So the first time I made this, I actually had to move baby bird down because he was too close. So that's why we're doing baby bird first. Um, okay. So we're going to have a little kiss up here. We want to make sure we have some room to write the word tweet. Um, so I'm going to actually put, let's do daddy bird. Now the bird's shapes of their bodies, very simple. It is a circle and then an oval. So I come across a lot of adults, especially. You don't hear this from kids. 
Not until they get into like, oh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, you might hear it more from kids, but a lot of adults. The first thing they tell me when I tell them that I'm an artist or that I have an art studio um, is, oh, I'm not artsy. I can't draw. That's the first thing they say. And so part of my mission with the Painted Toad is to, you know, kind of change that perception that art is not just the ability to draw. Yes, there are artists out there who are fantastic at drawing. They can do just amazing things. Um, but that's not what all art is all about. Art is so much more than that. Creating things is so much more than just being able to draw. So I'm going to put my little beaks in here. And if you look at my picture here, okay, does this look like a, you know, world renowned artist right here? No, it's just shapes. But these shapes are going to turn into um, other things. We're going to fill them in. But, you know, most drawings and things start with shapes. And you have to think here, you know, if you're one of those people that's like, I'm not good at art, I can't draw. Well, how many, how much time during every day do you spend drawing? Probably not a lot, you know? So a lot of times, um, if you can't draw or if you're not good at it, it's because you don't practice. It's just like anything else. Um, the more you practice something, the better you will get at it. So I'm going to kind of leave this here. Um, and if you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting a Valentine's charger plate. This is Home Tweet Home. And so um, if you want to join us um, later on, all you have to do is put tweet in the comments and make sure you give permission for StreamYard to show me your comments. Um, and then I will be posting the, or I will give you a link to the supply list and also um, a link to this video. So you can watch it later if this, if you want to create it later. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a little bit of these vines just so I know where they're going. Using a paint pen here. This is just a white paint pen. There's lots of different um, paint pens that you can get. And I'm just doing a swirly, bumpy line here. It does not have to be perfect. And as I come down here, I'm just going to do a little curly cue. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to swirl it around. And then we're doing bumps like so. And we are masking out everything. This is not all going to be white. It's just doing the white kind of helps us figure out where the different parts of our picture are going to go. It's like our rehearsal our dry run here. Okay, so I've got a couple little hearts that I'm going to do here. Um, I, I think I'll put one over here. I mean, you can put these wherever you want, really. That's the other thing with the art projects that I do. Um, you know, I really encourage you to not be afraid and try something a little different. So uh, you don't have to make it just like me, okay? I was saying earlier that, you know, if pink is not your color, well, then choose a charger plate that's a different color. Could you turn these, instead of having red birds, could you do blue birds? Yeah, you you have all of those options um, when you're doing projects and things like that. So it's, you know, if you're more comfortable doing the copycat thing where you're following me step by step, that's fantastic. Go ahead and do that. But eventually, I want you to have the confidence to kind of go out on a limb yourself and test out your own ideas. A lot of my youth students that I teach um, painting to are getting really good at this. So we've been doing paintings. Um, I have a pocket paintings group I teach uh, weekly. And I've had some some of my students since, since September and November. And, you know, we're, we're into February now and they are taking so many more risks with their painting. They're not afraid to change it up. The more you do something, the easier it becomes. So take that to heart. The more you practice and do something, the easier it's going to get. And that's true for so many things. The same thing for art. All right. What I'm getting out now is a flat brush right here. And um, I put a little bit of white paint on my palette. Um, this is acrylic paint, and here's a really cool thing with this particular project. Um, you could use enamel paints on here if you wanted it to really stick well, but 
for this project, I kind of just went with the regular acrylics because if you make mistakes, you can actually um, scratch them away because they don't stick right to this plate. So I actually did that on my first um, charger that I made. I had to move the little baby bird down. So I just wiped baby bird away. <laughs> and I also messed up on the lettering. So I just rubbed it away with a damp paper towel and it worked perfect. So I'm masking in the areas. These are gonna be painted red, but I'm painting them white right now because sometimes um, red, depending on the paint brand that you are using, it can be a bit transparent. And so I didn't want it to look real streaky. I wanted to get more of a solid looking color. And in order to do that, you mask. Sometimes um, with different projects, with painting projects, uh, if you do, let's say you do like a really dark blue background, like I did a sunflower for a friend um, and I did a very dark blue background first and then I wanted to paint the sunflower on top. Well, if you paint the sunflower right on top of the blue background, that blue background is just going to show through the yellow. There's just no way of avoiding it um, because yellow is so light and blue is so dark. So in order to make that sunflower stand out and not look transparent, I painted it in white first, and that's that this masking technique. All right, let's get little baby here. I'm gonna paint baby in white. There we go. And I'm just using a flat brush here. If you're just joining us, um, I'm Rose from the Painted Toad. And we are an online art studio, or I should say I am an online art studio. It's just me right now, though my daughters um, have been contributing their ideas. They have lots of artistic ideas. They're very artsy like me. Um, and I am here to teach you how to become more confident as an artist, to find time for your art, um, to be creative, artistic, and get connected to other people like you and me and people who, you know, they need that support group to cheer them on. I've noticed with um, the, the students that I teach, adults and kids, but most especially adults, there's this fear of making a mistake or they're very, very critical. And maybe this is you, you paint something or you make something, you take a class and you look at everybody else's and, and you're like, Oh, theirs is so great. It's so awesome. And mine looks terrible. Mine looks like an amateur. Mine doesn't look good. And we are so hard on ourselves. Even I do that. Part of my story as an artist um, was that I loved doing art as a kid. I, I did art in high school. Um, but then when it was time to go to college, I didn't pursue art school because I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was go as good as some of the art um, students who I had seen their, their, their artwork and it was just amazing. And I'm like, my artwork could never be like that. And so I never pursued um, art school or I never went to, um, I did take art classes in college and I did uh, minor in fine art, but um, I didn't go to study art. And I, I always regret that a little bit. So part of the painted toad is me refinding, you know, refinding, is that even a word? Rediscovering, that would be a better word, rediscovering that part of me um, that is an artist and realizing that to be an artist, it's not, it has nothing to do with other people and their talents. It's about what you love to create and, you know, what makes you happy. That's more what art is about. And so that's what I'm about at the Painted Toad. It's helping people discover that um, and kind of redefining or um, reteaching what art, what the meaning of art is and creating art. You have to think about it with, um, you know, with the great artists, all those famous artists that we see, you know, lots of pictures in museums, you know, the Vincent Van Goghs and the Henri Matisse and um, Frida Kahlo's and um, all of those phenomenal artists, you know, why were they great artists? Well, they were because 
they were themselves <laughs> when they did their art. And you can look at a Van Gogh and know it's a Van Gogh because that's his style. That's the way he did things. Or you can look at a Georgia O'Keeffe and know, oh, that looks like a Georgia O'Keeffe because of her style and her, her vision of the world. And that's what it's about. It's not painting, you know, or making art to please other people. It's, it's making art to please yourself, to make yourself happy. All right, so that's my little preachy point there. Um, so we're just masking this in right now. And what I'm going to do, let me see here. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna work a little bit on this green here while these other areas are drying. So we're gonna let that dry. And the great thing about acrylic paint is it dries very quickly. So in order to do the green, I'm gonna, I still have some white here and I have the, a dark green. You could use any shade of green that you want. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of color mixing here. And if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can mix colors. You know, you always have the option of, you know, craft paint comes in a variety of different shades and tones and colors. So if you're not into mixing colors and that terrifies you, well then just go to the um, craft store and pick the colors you like. You don't have to mix anything, but notice I'm using a round brush now and I put green and white onto my brush uh, at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna swoop it around here, just like so. And I'm kind of bringing it along my little line that I made. And if you go over your line or you don't get it quite perfect, that's okay, because you can go back and fix that. And if I do anything, any arrows here, I will show you exactly how I do that when I need to fix something. So the great thing about acrylic paint is that um, it can dry very quickly. And then if you make a mistake, you can paint right over it. But with this little charger plate, it's even easier because um, you can actually take and scratch your mistake off. I just scratch it off with a fingernail. So it is possible. Okay, so we have one little squiggly green line. And if you're just joining us, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. And if you'd like to comment um, during the presentation, I'm using StreamYard, so you have to um, grant StreamYard permission to show me your comments on Facebook. Um, and we are painting a Valentine's Home Tweet Home Charger. If you want the free, um, what am I trying to say? The, the free supply list and a link to this video later, put tweet in the comments, just T-W-E-E-T, -E -E and I will um, post it in there for you to access. So you can do this at another time if you don't have the supplies ready to do it with me, if you're not painting with me right now. All right. So there we go. I've got my green vines here. And while this, I'm going to check here. This is all dry right here, so that's good. Um, I think what I'm going to do, though, I think I'm going to paint the little baby bird first. Oop, baby's still wet. See that? I just got some white paint on my finger. All right, we're not going to paint baby bird first. We're going to wait because um, we don't want anything to mix up here. Let me check my hearts. Okay. You know what we could do, though? I didn't mask the leaves, but since we're doing green and white, let's just paint some of those little leaves on there. So we might as well. Leaves are super simple. You just kind of do a little arc this way and a little arc that way. Got some green and white paint right on this round brush. One, two, super simple. And if you're thinking it's not super simple, um, you know, if, if you're not sure how to do something, practice it. So like, you know, practice on your palette or practice on a piece of paper. That's a really good, you know, if you're like, I don't, I'm not ready to do that. I don't think I can. We'll practice first. Try it a few times on something else and then take it to your, to your um, picture that you're doing. And these, I'm just kind of putting these randomly in different places here. Oop, I got a little bit on my edge there. I'm going to wipe that right away. Well, it's wet. It's super easy to wipe away. And of course, it's not being easy right now. <laughs> 
All right, here's the first little tip. If you make a mistake, I don't have any Q-tips here, but that would have worked perfect. I'm just going to take a little paper towel, dip it right here, get it wet. And then I'm just going to sneak in here. I got a little bit on the green edge. You probably can't even see it, but I am a type A perfectionist. So I can't have that on there. And then I'm going to dry that a little bit. Okay. Back to creating my leaves. Um, you know what? I forgot to mention something really important. When you are painting with acrylics, like before I was using a flat brush, it is extremely important to soak your brush in water when you're not using it because acrylic will dry on your brush and then it'll ruin the brush. Like it'll make it hard and crunchy and you won't be able to, uh, to paint with it anymore. So always important to soak the brush when it is not being used. All right, got some leaves there. And I'm gonna do some leaves on the other side. So, just doing little arcs here. Nothing fancy. And you kind of just put them wherever they fit. Like I might be able to squeeze maybe a small one right there. I could do a little one. There we are. Let's do another one over here. And I think I'm going to fit one right here. And what else? How, where else can I fit one? I could probably fit like a small one here. And maybe a little bit bigger and I'm dipping in the green and the white there we go so there we have all of our little green leaves ready to go um let me check baby okay my bird family is all dry now so usually what I do with the painting is I will kind of bop around um, the picture while I'm working and um, I do that so that one area will dry and I can work on another area. I mean, if you, if you try to paint over something that's wet, that's going to mix. Sometimes we do it on purpose. Sometimes we want that paint to mix. But other times, you know, you're not going to want your paint to mix. So you need to let it dry first. Um, another great trip, uh, tip is I have a hair dryer always handy. So if I need to dry something a little faster... I just pull my hair dryer out. I actually don't even really use it anymore to dry my hair. I usually just dry my paintings with it. So it's more like my paint dryer than my hair dryer anymore. So I'm getting a little bit of white and red here. And I'm going to be um, creating some pink with that in a minute. Because um, our little baby bird, let me pull this up again so you can see what we're working on. Our little baby is kind of a, a brighter pink than the mommy and daddy. They're a little bit uh, deeper. And then you can see the hearts are different shades of pink and red so we're going to start straight up um i'm going to do baby bird first and the reason why is because i like to conserve my paint and i've got this wonderful green paint that's going to go in for the nest but i want to get baby painted so that i can you know do that before my green dries it won't dry that fast it should be fine where i have this little blob but i want to make sure i use it all so let's do this. We're going to do some color mixing. So I'm going to mix a little bit. I have a little palette knife here. You could use your brush if you want to, but I like doing the palette knife because sometimes if you're mashing your brush around, mixing the paint, it kind of frizzles out your, your bristles. Is that, is that a thing? Frizzled bristles? So always, always, always easier to mix the darker color into the lighter color. So if I'm making pink, I'm going to take my darker red and I'm going to mix it in with the white. Okay. Um, it's, I don't know why it's just easier that way. It'll, it'll work better. If you go the other way, you're just going to have to keep adding white and cap, keep adding white and white. And before you know it, you've used up all your white paint trying to get the, the uh, tint that you want. So this is pretty, that's pretty bright. That's almost the same color as my plate. So not dark enough. So what am I going to do? I'm going to just take a little bit more red and bring it in. I might end up using all that red, but I always do a little bit at a time. That way I know that I have enough. All right, we're getting darker here. Ooh, that's kind of a pretty shade. Let me see. That's better. I might do, I think I like that shade. I might do, all right, I'm going to do just a little bit more red. I kind of want it a little bit deeper here. 
And you might be thinking, why didn't you just mix all the red in there in the purple in the first place? But I didn't because I wasn't sure how my tint was going to look. So I can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. All right, so there we go. It's kind of hmm, a little bit Pepto Bismol color, but we're <laughs> we're going to add some more uh, white detail in there and stuff to kind of tone that down. All right, I'm just going to wipe off this little palette knife. Don't need that right now. Wipe off my finger. Doing pretty good. Usually when I paint somehow at some point I will end up with paint in my hair. Don't often get it in my clothes, but sometimes I do. Oh, there's another great tip. Acrylic paint does not come out of your clothes. So be careful. Either wear a smock. I always tell my youth students, wear a smock or an old shirt. Never wear your favorite shirt when you're painting. Okay, so I'm going to take this um, pink shade here and I am going to paint my little baby bird and I'm gonna just I'm using a flat brush again I got that flat brush out of my water and I'm just gonna paint in baby bird right here just like this and I did make quite a bit of pink but I also have some pink hearts I'm gonna do so I'm kind of just painting down here now I know some of this nest is going to show up and hide the little baby bird. So I'm just going to kind of bring it down a little bit. There we go. Make sure I get all a baby here. We don't want the masking. There we go. So there's little baby. Little pink baby bird. And then while I have my pink, uh, I'm going to just double check here. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I added some other little hearts here. Um, for option. Oh, let me pump my, there we go pull my paint pen a little bit. I'm going to try something here. All right, here's a little bit of experimentation. I, I do tell my students that sometimes art is a lot like science because you have to do experiments to see how certain things are going to work. A lot of artists experiment with different things. There we go. So I'm going to see if this masking works with just the... Um, just the paint pen so i'm going to do a few more little hearts here and this will dry a lot faster the paint pen will dry faster than the paint and of course i don't know if you can hear that hopefully not but my husband has decided to start drilling in the basement but he is working on my art studio so i can't complain because eventually i'll be down there doing these classes so i'm not going to complain but hopefully you can't hear that and it's not like some crazy sound effect coming across the sound of drilling. All right. So there are those little hearts. Now, by the time I'm ready to paint some of these hearts pink, oop, we need one between mama and daddy for their kiss. Um, these should be dry. So I'll do my little side edge hearts first, and then I will come back and paint over some of these with my beautiful pink. Ooh. I want to make sure that's right over mommy and daddy. So um, see what I did there? It wasn't quite perfect. So I just made my heart a little bit fatter and moved it over a little. There we go. No problemo. Okay. It's coming along. So hopefully, I'm just going to check here and see. Oh yeah, we are live. So if you're watching right now, go ahead and comment. Um, you do have to give StreamYard permission to comment. Um, let me see here. Oh yeah, all right, very cool. I'm just checking this out on my phone to see how, see how it's all working. All right, so let's keep going here. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to share this. That way all you 
wallflowers can uh, check it out. So I'm going to share this. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, nope. Okay. Be patient with me. This is giving myself uh, some drawing time here. Let's see. Mm -hmm -hmm. I want to share this as myself and not as the painted toad, but it doesn't look like it's giving me the option. Maybe because I'm live right now. I don't know. All right. All right, friends and family, come and see me paint. Give me some comments. All right, I just messaged my friends and family so I can get some people to say hello. <laughs> I'm getting lonely. I'm lonely. All right. If I break out into song, um, you know, I do miss singing. I sing in choir and things like that. So I miss singing. So I apologize if anyone uh, isn't in a singing mood. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I sound a little Southern. I get talking too much and then I might like slip into a different accent. I can do all sorts of little voices, all sorts of things. It's kind of entertaining for myself. <laughs> Shade of pink here that I made with white and red. And I'm using it up on my hearts. I'm going to do some red hearts too. And look, they're already dry. I told you they would be. So I'm going to paint those in. Get all my little hearts. Just like so. And so if you are joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. And we are painting a Valentine's charger. It is home tweet home. Super cute. In fact... I've been planning for this live for a long time and I actually haven't even put mine up. So I actually am going to have two. So that's, um, that's the little thing I wanted to tell you. I am going to be giving, um, I'm going to be giving this home tweet home to one lucky person. So if you um, put in the comments, you can put tweet in the comments if you want to get um, the supply list and the video link for making this. Or if you would like to get this little charger plate sent to you. Um, let's see, what should we put in the comments? Um, how about L-O-V-E, love. Put love in the comments if you want a chance to um to be picked to get this little charger and i will send it to you it'll be all yours painted by me and sent right to you all right now that i got some pink in there i'm gonna go back and do a little red and then we'll go back to our green to finish the nest i'm using flat brushes here and i did use most of my red here to mix in with my pink so i do need a little bit more red let me get some of that. I don't need a lot. You can always get more paint. You don't have to like, that was always a thing when I was teaching in the classroom. I was very strict. I wouldn't let kids get their own paint because sometimes they squirt like a whole bottle out and it's like, yeah, you don't need that much. Just a touch. We can always get more, but we can't get it back in the bottle. So I'm kind of cheap with my supplies. I want them to last for a long time. Because I don't know if you've ever been to um, an art store or a paint store. I mean, painting and art stuff isn't always cheap. You can find lots of great stuff now, though. Like, Michael's has a lot of 
um, options in their in their art and craft area. Um, one that I found has a lot of craft paint options is Hobby Lobby. And I'm not like, you know, advertising for them. I'm just telling you where I found some of these things. Uh, Joanne Fabrics, not as many paint supplies. They're more, um, you know, well, they're Joanne Fabrics. So their focus is a lot more fabrics and things like that. So they do have some things though. In a pinch, I go there. But for the most part, my other... Um, places for getting paint is a lot of Michaels and online though you can get some great supplies. I mean you can get them on Amazon paint supplies. Um, but I go to blick.com. It's um Dick Blick. It's an art supply store. I used to do that a lot when I was a classroom teacher because you can get a lot of supplies for um they have pretty low prices. And there are some Blick stores around. Um, where we are there is one in Royal Oak, Michigan, um, right on Woodward, there's a Blick um, store location. But for the most part, if you order things online, they ship them really fast. And they usually offer discount shipping depending on how much you order. Once I ordered so much clay for my students, it was air dry clay. It's so heavy. So clay is really heavy. Um, they actually had to send it out on a special truck with a pallet. It was an order from Blick, so it had like, extra shipping because it was so heavy. So I'm adding some red here, and you can probably, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can kind of see, it's a little bit transparent. And this is why I did that white masking first, because um, I wanted it to show up a little bit better and not look so transparent. I want it to be a, a bit more solid looking. And I'm using a flat brush right here. I think I painted the hearts though with a round brush. So I kind of go interchangeably. The nice thing about the flat brush is you can get some real clean edges with uh, with that flat brush. But just painting in some hearts here. I'm gonna come down here, get this one. There we go. And if you are just joining me, and if you want to make any comments, um, you can. You have to give permission to StreamYard. It's a streaming service. Um, you can actually, oh, I did a different heart. Okay, this is interesting. So I'm looking at my sample here. Um, let me do these little hearts up here. So I did some red hearts, and then I kind of made a, a magenta with some of my pink and some of my um, red that I have. So I'm going to create that second or that third tint here but this is going to be this one is red over here I'm going to save some of my little hearts up there and do a different uh, tint of the red kind of like a deep 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 pink this is true red and then do deep pink so with these paint colors you know, depending where you go and what kind of paint you're getting, if you get craft paint, they have all sorts of fun little names they like to give to the colors. Um, but honestly, when you're doing a painting with me or on your own and you have a supply list and it says, you know, this color red, and you're looking like at all the reds and you're like, I can't find that color. Uh, you don't have to have the exact color. You could pick a color that you like. So, you know, look at all the reds and pick the shade that you like. Don't worry about getting exactly what's on the list. Or if, you know, the list just says red and you're like, well, which red should I get? Pick the one that you like. You don't have to worry about picking a zillion different ones. Okay, so where are we at with our birds here? You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I think I'm going to switch to my round brush for this. Now, I added some little things on their heads the last time. I wasn't exactly sure how I liked that, so I might change it up this time. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to use my round brush here. I'm just drying it off. It had some green on it, so definitely want to make sure the green isn't in there because if the green gets with the red, then we're going to brown. I don't want my birds to have brown tails, so I want them to have red and pink tails. So I'm going to just get in the red here. 
And for the tail, oops, I got a drip that's creeping down my brush. Nothing like a drip of water to mess it up. <laughs> okay, there we go. I got the little drip. So I'm just going to take and paint. This is the bird's tail. I'm just going to kind of come down here and just do a little swirl. And we'll do some more with pink on there in a minute. But you just come down and do a little swirly curlicues. It's kind of a fancy tail. I did a little bit fancier on the on the daddy bird because, you know, daddy birds, they tend to have the fancier plumage. And then I'll do a little on mommy bird over here. So I'm doing, this is just red, plain red with a round brush, kind of added some little curls. I mean, I did add a little bit on their head, so maybe I'll try that a little bit here. Oop. And I'm going to give him three little plumes. He's a little fancier than mommy. Mommy bird. There we go. And then baby, baby has a little bit of red down here in her wings. So I'm just going to put a little bit of red right there. And that's going to be her little, her little baby wings. We're going to do some wings on the other ones too. But we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to finish here with my hearts. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of this pink here and kind of separate it. There we go. Just kind of, I don't need a lot of the pink. Let's see, what else do I have? Not much, I have to do pink. So I'll save some of it in case I need to do an extra layer on anything. Um, and then I'm going to take some more of the red here. And I'm going to create one more darker shade of the pink to get more of a magenta. I need more red though. I think my reds, let's see what I can scrape up there. Yeah, I'll need a little bit more red than that. I want it deeper than that. So let me get some more red. You're just joining us. I feel like a broken record. I'm Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting a Valentine's charger called Home Tweet Home. And if you want the um, supplies for this charger, the supply list with a video link to how to paint it, um, just put tweet in the comments. And if you would like an opportunity to be chosen to get this charger, I will send it to you um, if you are chosen. And all you have to do is put love in the comments. So L-O-V-E or tweet if you want the supply list to paint it yourself. But if you're looking at it saying, I don't think I can paint that, you can always put love in, in the comments and I will... Uh, I'll put you in a drawing for someone who can earn this lucky painting. Okay, so I've got the deeper shade here. Look what I've got. See, I've got the light pink, I've got the red, and now I've got this really deep shade. Uh, it's kind of a magenta, I guess I would call it maybe. All right, so what I'm going to do with my magenta is I'm going to go in and finish painting those hearts. And I'm just drying this off. Now this had red on it, so I really don't care if it's super clean. Because red into magenta, that's not going to cause any issues. It's when you switch from colors like, you know, green to red, that's when you can get some color mixing. And that always, you know, that doesn't always turn out that great. Ooh, this is a pretty shade of pink. I like it. So there we go. I am painting this heart here. And I've got a couple more little hearts. Now you could actually, you could have a lot of fun with this design, really. This is kind of, you know, because it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, that's kind of what I was going with the theme. But, you know, this would be fun to do for spring. You could do um, a white charger and do bluebirds on it with some vines and maybe some, um, you know, pretty you could do flowers instead of hearts you could make some real simple daisies or something like that that's even giving me ideas maybe I need to do a class for that one um, but yes you can make you can create something so take this idea and think what else could I do with this idea so I could do something year-round you could do something for St. Patty's Day you could do little shamrocks that would be fun too So I'm trying to here, let me let me angle my hand. Sorry, when I get over here on some things, 
if I have my hand up high where it's comfortable for me to paint, you can't really see. So sometimes I will left hand it. I will paint with my left hand um, just so you can see better and you don't see my big fat hand in the way. There we go. Okay. So I got all my hearts in. Got that. I was going to do a little bit. Let me check my birds here. They're still, they're good. They're good. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of this magenta and kind of paint a wing area here. I don't know if you can see that real well. Yeah, you can see that. Um, I'm doing this magenta and, and I'm not, I'm not like being real fancy here. I'm just kind of creating a, a shape. I'm just arcing and just creating two little bumps here for the wing. You could just do a little oval there if you want. So that's going to be the wing. And then I want some of this magenta. I want it also um, in some of the tail. Now the tail is still a little bit wet with red paint, but that's okay. Because if the red mixes with the magenta, that's fine. That's not going to cause any issues. So I'm going to take it here. And I'm going to bring this down and bring that in. Bring a little color. Get some, and I'm kind of doing it, I'm laying it on kind of thick here. So if you want a little texture in this, you can always lay it on a little bit thicker. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. I think that looks good. I might even lighten it up with some of this light pink. Maybe just while it's still wet, just kind of come on top with the light pink and just let it mix right in there. So as I'm talking here, I'm kind of, you know, this is me working on a whim, like looking at it and saying, no, oh, I, I think I can brighten it up. So I'm just going to add that little bit of white, light pink there to brighten it up. Okay. All right, let's do a little bit of work on baby bird. So I was going to add in some more color on my baby bird and maybe just a little bit of this magenta would look perfect. So I'm going to put some of this on my brush, some magenta, maybe some pink and just kind of repaint baby's face a little bit, get some more uh, lines in there. So a little bit less smooth, a little bit more liney, like baby's got some feathers growing in. And uh, I'm just, see, sometimes when I need to just clean that off the brush, I just do that there. And then I come, come in from my next color here. So I'll add a little bit there. Okay, baby looks good. All right, we are almost done. Um, I'm going to go, now this I just did wet, so I could go back and do my green, but I'm going to have to be real careful if I do that so that I don't get any of that pink in with my green. So you know what I think I might do instead to give it a little time to dry? I'm going to go back with my paint pen, and I'm going to um, give a little shake here. Wake it up. Wake up, paint pen. I'm going to go back over my letters um, just to darken them in a little bit just so that they're nice and solid. So I'm going right over those lines. And this time I don't have to start in the middle. Those that were watching from earlier, um, you know, I started with the M and did the E and then I went back and did the O and the H and that was to help center my words. So right now I can just go letter to letter because I've already put where I want it. So here we go. And if you want to make any comments on here, make sure you allow. I'm using StreamYard tonight so that I had the option of switching my video over. I'm used to teaching uh, art classes on Zoom and I, I can switch my video on Zoom. So you can't really do that on Facebook, but StreamYard gives me that option. So that's why I'm doing StreamYard. So you have to give StreamYard permission so I can see any comments that you're making. And right now I am just going over my lettering. And I mentioned earlier, if lettering scares you or if you don't like your handwriting, I've had some people say, oh, I don't like my handwriting. Um, there's, you know, other options. There's, you can get stencils with lots of um, lettering. I'm sure home would be an easy one to find because lots of people make different art projects that say home on them. Um, or... If you know somebody with a Cricut machine or you have one yourself, you can cut 
cut out vinyl letters and stick those right on there. They would stick on. You get permanent vinyl, and it would stick right on there. There we go. I want to darken that in just a little bit. And let's see here. I'm just going to do some touch tests here. How are my... Okay. So these hearts out here, my birds are still wet, but my hearts are pretty dry. So I'm going to take a little white and we're going to add some highlights on here. Some little shiny spots to make our hearts look super sweet and shiny. Well, I don't know about sweet. Maybe if they're candy hearts. I don't know. What, what about all of you? Do you feel... Uh, how do you feel about Valentine's Day? Are you one that likes to get that box of chocolates or are you more, uh, it's not really, really a holiday. I would not turn down a box of chocolates. I do like dark chocolate. Honestly, I, I guess I wouldn't want a box of chocolates, but if you gave me a nice dark chocolate bar, I would totally not uh, turn that down. It's one of my favorites. So I'm just taking straight white here and I'm just adding some little curves because the top of uh, the heart is curved, so my little highlights. Let's add in some of the lines there. See, it gets a little, little bit of shine. And I'll put some on my pink ones. So I'm adding a little bit of shiny highlight here on the hearts. Super cute that way. I mean, you don't have to, but you can see it really does kind of make a difference here. It kind of brings, brings it out. And I'm using just a small round brush to do this. Um, you could you could use something different. You could use a, a small flat brush would work too. I'm learning more and more about brushes. I've been um, taking some other paint classes with some other art gurus that I'm following right now. And uh, learning all sorts of things about, you know, filbert brushes and what to do with the fan brush. And so even I am always trying to perfect and learn and you know get better you don't really get better unless you practice so i i lean towards using my flat and my round brushes a lot but that's what i'm used to and that's what i you know have practiced a lot with but in order to get better with the other brushes i gotta practice them it's like anything you gotta practice okay we'll finish the hearts Sometimes what I do, sometimes it's tricky to do the um the fine lines here. So what I will do is I will take my pinky and kind of balance either on the table or like here I might balance on my plate. And it helps give me a little bit more control of my brush. So I can kind of focus that brush energy. Energy, does brush have energy? But just, I, I can focus what I'm doing and I'm not like shaking all over the place. It also helps me balance it too. So you can actually see what I am doing. So, cause you know, generally when I paint, if I'm not doing one of these videos, I paint right on top, but trouble with that is you can't see anything if I'm painting on top. So I've had to learn to paint to the side, kind of side widening it, a side winder. Let's add a little curve on this. So I'm just using my finger to balance. Now you could, um, you could go in here and use your white paint pen to do this, but I do find that the, the solid white paint is, is a little bit thicker. It gives a little bit um, of a more solid highlight. The, sometimes the paint pen is just a bit too thin if you want a real clean white line, it gets a little transparent. Okay. So I think most of this paint around where my baby bird is dry. And since I have a round brush, I could switch to a different brush, but this one already has white on it. And I'm gonna do white and green. And I'm just gonna kind of swirl in here with white and green on the brush. See how I did that? It's just a whoop, just going in a circle. Swirl it around. I mean, if it makes you happy, you could do little fun noises like shoo, shoo. <laughs> uh, you know, Bob Ross was entertaining because he did fun things when he was painting, you know. 
he made up fun things and he was a he had great ideas too great philosophy on painting which sounded a lot you know like philosophy on life so i don't know about you but i love to watch his his painting videos not only because they teach you really cool things with paint but uh because they teach you really cool things about life and perspective and you know how to think about things in a different way i'm just going to add some little swoops here like this little nest it's got the it's got some little stray i don't know is it made out of little grass bits i'm not sure what these birds made their nest out of but it's got a few little stray shoots poking out there just like that so that's our little nest okay Whew, we are almost done how are we doing on time here oh we've gone it's been a whole hour so a whole hour here last thing to do is details so hours not too bad for a painting some of my larger paintings they might take two hours i did a painting class once and it took us about three hours to do it was a a cat with a moon it was a, a student it was a birthday party um so I'm going to, I'm going to warm up my black. Let's see here. See, my pink is still a little wet. Is it wet? Oh no, it's almost dry here. So while the rest of that pink is drying, I'm going to warm this um, paint pen up. I got a black paint pen here and this is great for outlining. Um, I do outline a lot of things with a paintbrush and really the only way to get better at outlining with a paintbrush is to actually do it. I'm going to shake it off a little bit here. But um, if you're not outlining or if you're not comfortable yet with a paintbrush, it's something you can, you know, you can try later. Ooh, I might have to outline this with a paintbrush because my paint pen is like not wanting to function. I should have checked it before we started. Paint pen malfunction. All right, pumping. Oh, oh, it's coming to life. All right, I think we're okay. It's like, no. All right, I'm using the chisel tip. Ooh. There we go. So what I'm gonna do for some of this outlining, um, you could use the round tip, but I'm gonna use the tip of the chisel tip here, okay? And that'll give me a little bit more control for where I wanna put my lines and things like that. So I'm gonna come in here, let me see if I can get my finger balanced because I don't want to mush up anything. I'm gonna come in here and start with my beaks. And let's see, I can just go right on there with the black and kind of paint in mama's beak. And then I'm gonna paint in daddy's beak here. They're giving each other a little bird kiss. Okay, and then of course we need eyes. So we'll give daddy an eye. And then mommy, she's got her eyes closed, so I'm going to do a little curve. Let's see. She's got her eyes closed. There we go. Just like that. And then of course, um, Let's see, I don't want to do too much on um, the, my wet parts here. Like baby's still a little bit wet down here. My green's still a little bit wet. You know what I can do though? I can do their bird legs. So their bird legs just kind of come straight down from the body. And I come down like this. And maybe one more over here. And then just give them some little feet coming out like that and then mama over here let's bring her little do we have room for mama's feet uh, she might have to stand a little bit in front let's see if I can fit her feet in there I'll do a little bit of a angled foot here there we go see how I did that just modify the design what I do is I just tell people I meant to do that I don't tell them that my bird nest came over too far I just say, well, that's just the way I wanted to do mama's feet. So there's mommy and daddy's little feetsies. 
little tootsies, as my mom used to call them. <laughs> she used to sing us a whole song <laughs> in the bathtub. I don't know if any of my family members are listening, but you probably remember the tootsie song. All right, baby's little beak is open. So oop, let's see here. There we go. Got this corners working real good for me. I'm going to put little baby's beak here. And I'm just going to check this because I don't want to get this paint stuck on my paint pen because if I get a different kind of paint on there, then um, it might wreck the end of my paint pen and then it won't work. So we can just do baby's little mouth and see I left, I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you real close up here. I'll do a zoom in. I left a little pink in baby's mouth so it looks like it's open. So there, they're kissing. They love each other. All right, let me focus that again so you can see. And then I'm going to um, give baby some little eyes down here. He's kind of looking up at mommy and daddy saying, feed me. Isn't that the way when you have kids? It's like, oh, we have a moment alone together. And then the kids are like, feed us. We're hungry. <laughs> so I have uh, four daughters, those that know me. You know, I have four daughters. And uh, they are the joy of my life. They just... They're so creative and they're so smart and I could go on and on and tell you all the, all the ways I love them. Just like, you know, just like any parent, I'm sure. But they inspire me all the time. All right. My tail is still kind of wet here. So I'm hesitant to go in and do any outlining on the tail yet. But I could add, if you want, you can go in and you can add a little bit of some simple lines here, maybe on the where the, the feathers on the head are. Get mommy and daddy a little bit. Doop, doop. And I'm just using the edge of this um, paint pen to kind of outline. Now my first little birds, okay, I did these little feathers. And I never really, I don't, I want, I'm not sure that I, I'm totally happy with that. I've, I've looked at it and I'm like, I don't know if I like that or not. So maybe you like it. Um, but I think I'm going to do this one a little different. Just a touch different. Okay, my wings are dry. So I'm going to go in and outline these wings a little bit. And when I do the outlining, I don't do it all around and give it a big black outline. I just do some little suggested lines here. So you don't need to go in and make everything with a deep, dark black outline. If you just kind of suggest where those lines are, it gives you the look, you know. Your eye will finish will finish where that line is. The, your eyes will kind of decide where that line goes. And I'm going to do a little bit on baby here. Let me check here. Uh, I think baby's dry. Still a little tacky in the thick spots, but if I'm real gentle, I won't disturb the paint. So I'm just going to give a little bit of outlining to baby. There we go. Maybe a little feathers here on the neck. Kind of distinguish the head from the body. Maybe add a couple little feathers here. Down on, down on baby's chest. Maybe I'll add a couple little lines or feathers here. Not too many, though. I kind of like the a smooth look of my mom and dad bird here. I'm going to do a little outlining on their, their bodies. Okay, checking this. Yeah, my paint on the tail, the tail paint is still a bit wet. And I did go in and outline in my first one. I did an outline in the tail, but I don't want to put my brush through that. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of white, some damp white here, and just going to add some white feathers in there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of white. Make sure that brush is dry. 
always dry your brush. You don't want it to be, this isn't watercolor, it's acrylic. So we don't need a lot of water. I'm gonna add a little bit of shiny highlight here. I'm balancing my finger again and kind of getting it there and there on the beaks. Dry that a little bit more, I can tell. When, it's, when it thins out like that, I know that the brush is a little too wet. There we go. Maybe add a little shine on baby's beak here because he's got his little beak open. I'm going to connect that because I don't want it to make it look like baby has teeth. Baby birds don't have teeth. You could add a little highlight here in the eye. I don't think I'm going to, though. I think I'm going to leave the eyes without a highlight. And I was going to take, so I'm going to load up this brush with the white. And I'm going to just kind of sweep some white lines down in here. Some curls, curly tail feathers on our fancy father, father bird. And we'll give some to mama as well. Okay. And there we go. Um, let's see here. Is this dry? Still a bit wet. Okay, so I can do one trick here and I'm gonna check and see. I'm gonna mute my microphone and I'm gonna do that. Remember that hair dryer trick I told you? I'm gonna speed this up just so I can show you the last two things we're gonna outline. So I'm gonna mute myself so you don't hear the hair dryer going crazy on you. Um, and then I will uh, do the last bit of outlining so you can see what that looks like. So going on silent mode for the moment. And before I start this up, I'll just mention one thing. Um, with the hair dryer, you can always just put it on a cool setting. You don't have to put it on hot. Just cool setting and it'll dry. All right, let's do a little drying here. Okay, so we're all dry. So let's do our last bit of outlining. And I just realized as I'm drying this, I should have moved baby bird down a little farther because I have barely enough room for tweet. So hopefully you have more for tweet. That's what I did the first time I made that mistake. I should have moved baby's nest down. That's okay. I think we can squeeze it in there because it's home, tweet home. You know, what? I'm gonna just put it on an angle. Why not? Baby's right on an angle. T W always important to spell the word right. E E T. There we go. And my let's see my paint pen here is a little scraggly on the edge, so I think it gave my lines. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see where it's go over that again just to get that wispy part. There's a little bit wispy on some of the 
parts of the letter. There we go. That's better. Let's even those out a little bit. Okay, so we've got tweet. It's a little sideways, but honestly, I think that's kind of cute. So, you know, sometimes that happens. And if things happen that you, you, you didn't plan, well, that's all right. That's what Bob Ross called it, a happy accident. Oh, look what I did. So here's what, exactly what I was telling you not to do. Don't do it on wet paint. And I'm trying to write here on this. And that white is still a little bit wet. So I'm just not going to do this right now. I'll do it later, but I'll, I'll mention it to you and show you so you know. Um, I did want to add some lines, some curly lines here. Um, let me see. This one's pretty dry. did a good job drying that one. Let me see if I can get a curly line into... Yeah, nope, it's not going to work. So i got to let that dry a little bit more, but I'm not going to spend any more time drying it. I will just hold up our original so you can see. So the very last little bit you can do if you want is to outline or just do some little black swirls in here and maybe a couple little black curls on the tail. I did think about doing some um, shadowing maybe on the home, but I think I'm just going to leave it white. I think we'll just leave it as is. And so that is that. That is our project. Oh, hey, Jill Gottler, you're there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Well, Jill, if you put love in the comments, if you're still there, Jill, put love in the comments and you can be entered to win one of these sweet chargers, okay? And if you're the only one there, then you might be the only winner. <laughs> so put love in there, Jill. I can't think of anybody else who, uh, who deserves it more than that. Jill is is my mother-in-law, and she's the sweetest, nicest person. So deserving of uh, of a love charger. If I, I can't think of anyone else more deserving than her. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my beautiful face. Oh, let's see here. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Jill. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mima. All right, I'm gonna switch this over, and then I need to hold on. I'm gonna switch my camera here. There we go. Here I am. Here's the charger. That was actually me painting it. Here, I'll do it there so you can see it. Uh, which way do we turn it? There we go. Better lighting coming soon. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And like I said, if you want to do this project on your own, um, you can put, uh, what did I say? Tweet. Put tweet down in the comments and I'll send you a free link to the supply list and then a video link so you can do this on your own. Um, and then uh, your chance for the charger, if you if you tune in here before I tune out and put love in there, you get a chance at getting that charger. Um, and I think that's all. So this is Rose from the Painted Toad. And uh, I look forward to sharing more art with you. And uh, be creative, be artistic, and get connected. Thanks, and have a great night.